What's up, y'all? Today I am going to use some of my patterns to make outfits for the holidays. We made this pattern a while back for Halloween. It was for our Sally inspired dress, but today I'm going to use this sparkly fabric that I'm harvesting from a Christmas stocking. Just print out the pattern from our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com and make sure that the inch at the bottom is an actual inch or you may need to resize or reduce the pattern. Cut it out. I carefully cut open the stocking to lay it flat. It looks like we have some Powon in here, which should help with the sewing. I am going to turn it over so the good side is facing down, place the pattern on top and use pins to hold it in place. Cut them out, take the back panel, flip it over, and cut it out. I think I have just enough for sleeves, so I cut out two. I take the back panel and place it on top of the front, lining it up at the shoulder. I use a pin to hold it in place, then sew a straight line going across, about a quarter of an inch from the edge. You can use a needle and thread or a sewing machine. I use a sewing machine just because it's faster. Now I'm gonna flip this over just to get it out of the way. Then take the other back panel and line up the shoulders and sew straight across. Then I trimmed off the excess. Let's open it up. I need to add the sleeves, but I have a feeling this is going to shift. So I'm just gonna sew a little stay stitch going around the edge. Okay, now I can place it on the center. And we're gonna just sew going around the edge. I'm gonna do this by hand just because I don't trust my sewing machine skills. Then repeat for the other sleeve, fold over and hem the sleeves. Now I'm going to make a small cut at the neckline so I can hem it. Flip it over so the good side is facing down and fold it over. I'm just gonna sew a straight line going down this side, then up the other. Then trim off the excess, take the back panel, flip it over, lining up the sleeve and the side, and sew a line from the edge of the sleeve all the way down to the bottom. Make a small cut under the arm to release the tension, then repeat on the other side. Then trim off the excess. Now we are going to open it up, turn it over so the good side is facing down, and flip up the bottom, and sew a straight line going across. Okay, I sewed a zigzag stitch along the sides to stop the fabric from moving. Then turn it over, line up the edges. And I'm gonna sew a straight line about an inch and a half up to close the bottom of the dress. Now I'm going to use some baby Velcro and I like this cause it's a little softer and it lays a little flatter. Cut a small strip, pull the sides apart, Fold over one of the sides, then take the Velcro and sew it on top, and sew the other half to the other side. So when they overlap, it closes. Now I'm just gonna turn this inside out and see if our dress actually looks okay. And here it is. Aw, it's like a cute little boxy shirt dress that went from Happy Halloween to Hello Holidays with just a little bit of sparkle. Now let's use our sweatpants and sweatshirt pattern to make something cozy. First, I cut out the pants pattern, which has two pieces. For the sweatsuit, I'm gonna cut out everything except for the hood and the front pocket. So I am just using the front of the shirt, the back of the shirt, the cuff, the sleeve, and the bottom hem. I'm gonna use a green crushed velvet for this, also called a penne. This fabric has a little bit of stretch, so that is nice. Fold the fabric over, place the pant leg pattern on top, and cut through both layers. So we have two, then repeat for the cuffs, the back of the shirt, the shirt cuffs, Cut the sleeve on the fold, repeat to get two, cut one for the front of the shirt, then cut the bottom hem. And I cut an extra piece just in case I want to use it for the collar later. 
Let's start with the pants first. To make the pants, we will also need elastic, and this is 1 8 of an inch wide. On the pattern, there is an F and a B. The F stands for front, the B stands for back. Sew a straight line along the front curve first, using a needle and thread or a sewing machine. Now I am a little worried about my fabric going into my machine, so I'm gonna use a little piece of tissue paper and sew right on top. So you can see that I sewed the fabric right on top, and I'm sure there are other ways to do this. This is just what works for me. And now I'm just going to remove the paper. And we gotta clean all of this up. And we are good to go. Take the cuffs, fold them in half. I'm going to flip this over so the good side is facing up. Place the cuff at the bottom, lining up the raw edges and sew a line going across. I pulled the fabric slightly as I was sewing so that it would gather. Repeat on the other leg. So that should give us some nice little cuffs at the bottom of our pants. Now at the top, I'm gonna turn this over so the good side is facing down. Take the elastic and lay it near the top. Fold it over, closing the elastic on the inside and sew a straight line going across being careful not to hit the elastic. Creating a casing. Now you have to be very careful not to pull the elastic all the way through because it might be almost impossible to get it back in. Now we're going to fold this in half, lining up the edges. Carefully pull both ends of the elastic to gather it. Then sew a line through the elastic along the curve and stop. Trim off the excess. So now both the front and the back have been sewn. We have elastic around the waist. We just need to grab the cuffs and pull them apart. Line up the raw edges, then sew a straight line from one end all the way to the other. Trim off the excess and all of the strings. Turn them inside out to make some comfy pants. Now for the shirt. Let's take the front of the shirt and the sleeves Place the sleeves on the side of the front, lining up the edges, flip it over, and sew a straight line going across. Once sewn, flip it up and repeat on the other side. Then take the two back panels, line them up on the other side of the sleeve, flip it over the edge, and sew a line going across. Repeat on the other side, so now our shirt kind of makes like a star and it's open in the back. Take the cuffs and we're gonna sew those on the same way we did for the pants. Okay, so we are moving along. Take the extra hem that we cut, fold it in half, match up the raw edge with the neck. I'm using pins to hold it in place, then sew a straight line along the top. I'm gonna use a pretty wide seam allowance so my collar is thin. Then flip it over, and I'm gonna sew a top stitch right on the edge to keep that collar flat. It's not the neatest job, but I'm having a difficult time seeing the thread on this fabric. Mm. Let's just keep going. So we're gonna trim off the excess, lay it flat, and we're gonna fold it in half so the back lines up with the front and the sleeves are folded in half, lining up the edges. So we line from the cuff all the way to the bottom of the top. It's starting to look like a shirt, but I do want this to be kind of like a crop top, so I'm going to cut off the bottom. I place it on a doll first to get my measurements, and I'm gonna go right about here. I used a pen to mark the line, and now I'm just going to trim it off. Take the hem, fold it in half, then take the top, and we're gonna turn it so the good side is facing up. Line up the raw edge of the hem with the raw edge of the top, and sew a straight line. I pulled the hem slightly while sewing so it would gather. Trim off the excess, cut a small piece of Velcro, turn the top inside out, so the good side is facing out, flip it over to the back, fold over one side, and sew on one side of the Velcro. Then sew the other side onto the other end. 
to make a crushed velvet outfit. Perfect for a cozy holiday. This is looking amazing on a curvy Barbie. It's a little looser on an original. Let's revisit this pattern and see if we can turn it into a gown. I'm just gonna fold over the top here and right here. And I think that will give us a new look. And then for the back, I'm just gonna fold it over right at the underarm. Let's just fold that over. I'm using this green material again because we've got a lot. I wanna make sure it stretches out to the side. And I'm gonna place the pattern on top and we're gonna cut those out. We'll need two of these and one of these. So the back pieces have to be mirror images and on the front, I went ahead and cut it straight across rather than doing the V. So it looks like this. Then I cut a long strip for a collar. Take the front, place them onto the back pieces, lining up the edges on the side, then sew a straight line going up. Repeat on the other side so both sides are now connected. Lay it on a doll and wrap it around her. Then pinch it on the sides so we know where to take it in so it's a little more fitted. Then I sewed it and it's contouring to her shape. Now this fabric is stretchy so it's kind of forgiving. Fold over and pin the sides. And before I did that, I pinned the back closed just like it would be with Velcro. Then I took my time pinning it as neatly as I could. Then sew a straight line. After sewing, I trim off all of the excess and the loose string, and we only hemmed the sides. The top is still open. Take the strip of fabric, fold it in half so the good side is on the inside, then sew a line going across the edge. Trim off any excess bulk, then flip it inside out. I'm using the end of a paintbrush. So we have a nice little tube that we're gonna use for the collar. I'm gonna fold over the top just a little and sew it onto the tube using a blind stitch to attach it. Now let's add a skirt. Take a square of fabric, fold it in half, fold it in half again, then one more time. So here we have a folded point. These are the raw edges. And I'm gonna cut a rounded line, trying to be as neat as I can. Cut off the point. So we have a circle with a hole in the center. Cut from the edge to the center so we can open it up. Take the top of the dress, flip it over, lining up the raw edges. So a line going straight across to attach the two pieces. Now let's fold it in half, lining up the back, and we want that skirt to lay nice and flat. I sew a line going down the back, then out at an angle on the skirt. Now this is your time to get that perfect fit, so it's okay to take it in as much as you need. But I want a really full skirt, so once I get to the bottom of the shorter dress, I really exaggerate going out. Trim off the excess, flip it inside out, place it on the doll, wrap the collar around the neck, sew on snaps so it can close behind the neck to make a gown. And we can take a leftover piece from the stocking, cut a small piece of poster board, place it onto the fabric, fold over the edges and glue it down. I'm gonna add a little bit of ribbon on both sides just to help keep everything laying down. Then fold it in half and glue on the edges. To make a bag that is just big enough for her cell phone and adds a little sparkle to her look. Every year we make a holiday card. Last year's card featured Summer and Callie. This year Bella designed the card. She even made a frog food video so you can watch her draw it on her new series. She also drew another picture that I turned into an advent calendar. And we enlarged the card to make a gift bag. This printable is available on our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. After printing it out, we will need scissors, string or ribbon, recycled paperboard, and glue. Let's start with the card. Cut it out, along with the envelope. The card has four rectangles. So we're just gonna fold that in half. 
then fold it in half again. Open it back up, apply glue, refold it to make the card. For the envelope, we're gonna fold over those side tabs, then fold up the bottom tab, apply glue on the edges of the bottom tab, just on the sides. Then fold it up and press down. I like to hold it open for just a second to make sure I didn't glue it shut. Then fold over the top tab to make a miniature envelope for the card. Cut out the gift bag, fold on all of the lines, so you can kind of see how it is going to fold. Open it up, fold over the top, and glue it down. Cut two pieces of thread or ribbon. If you look at the outside of the bag, we're gonna glue these onto the sides with the pictures. So I'm just gonna turn it over and glue them at the top. To make handles, take the side tab, and you're gonna glue it to the other side, fold in the bottom side tabs, then glue down the top and the bottom. I like to trim the last one so it's a trapezoid so that when I fold it over, it doesn't hang over the edges. To make a gift bag. And we can cut small pieces of tissue paper, then push it down in the center and put it inside the bag to make it look all fancy. Oh, and we can even place the card inside. Now let's cut out the advent calendar and the template. Now the side tabs are very large. We probably don't need that much. I just wanted to make sure I had more than I needed because having not enough is like horrible, so. Fold on all of the lines and make a nice crease. Now this is going to be a flap that lays over the front calendar. So we're gonna actually fold this piece that way and then fold this one going back. So it will do like that. And I'm gonna put some glue right here and glue those two pieces together. So now it's like double-sided. And the rest of this is going to be used to cover a piece of recycled paperboard or a stack of paperboard. So I'm going to lay the template onto the paperboard and glue it down. Cut it out and repeat a few more times. To get to the desired thickness, Place it between the folds of the printable and glue down, then glue down the side tabs, wrapping them around the edges, and you can trim off the excess. Then fold over and glue down the top and the bottom tabs, enclosing the paperboard on the inside. And when we flip it over, we have our advent calendar. So we have a gift bag, a card, an advent calendar. What else do we need? Ooh. How about wrapping paper? After printing out the printable, trim off the white border to make a sheet of wrapping paper. Flip it over, take one of our Emma Frog boxes, place it on the corner, cut a piece of paper that's big enough to wrap the present, place the box in the center, fold over the edges and wrap it, tie it with string or ribbon with a bow on top to make a present. Take the remaining paper and roll it. Use glue to secure it to make a roll of wrapping paper. So today we made a party dress, a comfy outfit, a gown with a bag, a card, a gift bag, an advent calendar, and wrapping paper. Giving us seven crafts for the holidays. Thank you for joining us for a few holiday crafts. All of our printables are available on our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at myfroggystuff and the frog vlog. And we will see you next time. Bye! Just come.